Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interesting in today's video. In the past, Americans took the lead in discovering and mastering the core technology of silicon materials, so the United States has great advantages in previous generations of semiconductor materials, and the relevant standards are based on American technology. But starting from the third generation of semiconductor materials, China's advantages began to emerge. Not only that, China's new chip breakthrough, Elevenin University of Posts and Telecommunications, has made contributions to the fourth generation of semiconductor materials, foreign media said. Who is the United States blocking? Among all chip materials, Silicon has the widest application range and the most in-depth research and development of supporting technologies. Humans extract high-purity silicon from gravel and then melt it at high temperature into cylindrical silicon crystal columns, which are often called silicon ingots. This is just the beginning. Cutting tools need to cut silicon ingots into silicon wafers and polish them into wafers. The prototype of the chip is ready, and with the subsequent steps of photolithography, packaging and testing, the silicon-based chip is successfully built. Humans use silicon to manufacture a large number of electronic chips, forming today's information technology system. Almost all electronic devices cannot do without the support of silicon-based chips. But human exploration of silicon-based chips has reached a limit, and Moore's law is about to come to an end. In order to break Moore's law, we have to start with new materials and new processes. So humans have developed from the first generation of silicon semiconductor materials to the fourth generation today. Among them, in terms of fourth generation semiconductor materials, Chinese chips have made new breakthroughs. The research and development team of Elevenin University of Posts and Telecommunications has prepared high-quality gallium oxide epitaxial wafers on 8-inch silicon wafers, which means a key breakthrough in the field of ultra-wide bandgap semiconductors. In addition, there is also good news from the School of Microelectronics, University of Science and Technology of China. The research team, led by Professor Long Shibing, has developed a gallium oxide vertical trench gate field effect transistor for the first time, and once again accumulated more gallium oxide materials for domestic semiconductors. Core Technology From the first generation of semiconductor materials to today's gallium oxide, what development history has semiconductor materials experienced? What progress has China made? The earliest human history of research and development of semiconductor materials can be traced back to 1833. Faraday, the father of electronics, discovered the first generation of semiconductor materials, silver sulfide. The resistance of this material will decrease as the temperature rises. This has very good conductive properties, so it laid the foundation for the development of semiconductors for human beings. But it was silicon that really promoted the development of the first generation of semiconductor materials. In 1959, American physicist Jack Kilby invented the world's first silicon-based chip, which marked the shift of electronic components to tiny transistors. Human beings can accommodate millions of transistors in a tiny integrated circuit. On the basis of silicon-based chips, the density of transistors is continuously reduced, the line width is shortened, and the process technology is reduced. From micron breakthroughs to nanometers, to today's 3 nanometers, 
Every breakthrough is a solid foundation provided by silicon materials. But silicon materials can no longer meet the performance requirements, and integrated circuits in some application fields can find better substitutes. For example, the second-generation semiconductor materials gallium arsenide and indium antimonide can be widely used in optical fiber communication, and the transmission speed is 1,000 times that of silicon-based electronic chips. The third-generation semiconductor materials gallium nitride and silicon carbide can be used in display and power fields, and their high temperature resistance is also used in charges. No matter how powerful the performance of silicon-based chips is, it may not be able to meet all usage scenarios. Therefore, the research on diversified semiconductor materials has always been the direction of human efforts. Until now, the fourth-generation semiconductor gallium oxide materials have once again expanded the possibility of the semiconductor industry. In addition to changes in materials, the band gap has also been greatly upgraded. The silicon band gap is only 1.12 eV, which belongs to the narrow band gap semiconductor. By the fourth generation of gallium oxide, the band gap width has increased to 4.84 eV, which belongs to ultra-wide band gap semiconductors. As the band gap increases, the chip performs better in extreme environments. The historical span of the development of semiconductor materials is very large. The early invention and application of semiconductor materials were dominated by foreign countries. However, starting from the third generation of semiconductor materials, China has made more and more breakthroughs. Even in the field of fourth-generation semiconductor materials, China has made progress already at the international cutting-edge level. Looking at the world, few countries have achieved the preparation of gallium oxide on 8-inch silicon wafers, let alone 12-inch silicon wafers. If China can start with materials, master core technologies, and gradually overcome industrial chains such as manufacturing processes and semiconductor equipment, it is expected to get rid of its dependence on the United States for underlying technologies. Some foreign media said, who is the United States blocking? From the current point of view, the United States is in a cocoon. The chip blockade measures not only did not hinder China's footsteps, but also put operating pressure on many American companies. Both revenue and profit plummeted, as if they were also blocked by the United States. If the United States continues to sanction China, it will only get deeper and deeper, and with the efforts of Lebanon University of Posts and Telecommunications, University of Science and Technology of China and other universities, China Semiconductor will surely make greater progress.